Okay, hello. Today we're going to look at the uh, Sony PS1 Indie Dev System, the Net Eurose. This is a system that came out in 1997, three years after the PlayStation launch, and was used by many indie coders in their bedrooms to produce games for the PlayStation 1. As you can see, that the uh, this is the kit all set up, and it's displaying a demo, just like a running demo of what, uh, what the machine was capable of doing. What I'm doing here is just changing the amount of balls on the screen. Just a little bit of a demo just to get wet your appetite, just to show you what the machine was actually capable of doing. So this is the actual PlayStation 1 Net Eurose. It's, um, as you can see there, it's got a uh, memory card. We'll talk about that later. The physical form of it is not a lot different to the um, original PlayStation 1. It's got a, a comms port at the back, what I'm holding there. And that's the PC that we, you would use as the development platform. And it's just running, that's just showing that the code's been delivered to the PlayStation and was a primarily a DOS based program. What I'm doing here is starting off the directory. So PSX was, is the main directory. Um, just taking a look in that directory and you'll see there that there is a sample folder or directory. So we'll enter that if I can actually type it properly. Thank God for that. Right. Now, have a look in that one. There's one called check. Now, okay, check it, enter that one, and have a, have, a, have a look at the files in there. And what that basically contains is that ball program. So, what I'm going to do now is start up a, another program called Sciacons. Now, this is like the loader program for the PS Dev system. So, that screen basically tells you that you are connected to the PS1, and you can then run the actual program that you've uh, compiled. And that's me delivering it to the PlayStation from the PC, as you can see on both screens. So that's downloading through that uh, comms cable straight into the uh, PS1. And again, it's a pretty simple program. It's just there to show you some of the structures of the programs and some of the uh, programming language that was used to, you know, to create these particular games. So. This is just the ball program. All you can do is is you're, you're using this to show the the pad response and obviously the the graphical content on screen. Quite a cool little demo, just a part of the college course that people use to um, get to know the system. So what do you plug in? You know, it plugs in exactly the same as a normal PlayStation. I'm using Composite here, so I'm not using the main AV. This is the thing that's slightly different. That's the actual COM port that connects it to the PC. So the PC is based just like a 386. It is running uh, Windows 3.1, but you don't use that environment really. Most of the, when this first came out, you use the uh, DOS prompt. That little memory, the little memory card is the security dongle, and the disk is a boot disk allowing you to establish communication to the uh, host PC. Ken Kutaragi and Paul Holman are the people that set up the uh, Net Eurose system, a particular um, PS1 is um, was supplied originally to Middlesex University. This is the paperwork you get, just uh, greeting you to the system. You get this little brochure, just telling you some of the main features of the system. Quite a nice little brochure, just telling you how to set it up, how it communicates, and what uh, what you need to get up and running, which is quite cool. You do get it with it a, a quite a chunky manual when you when you're actually doing the um, Middlesex course. You've got this quite chunky manual written by these guys. Uh, come across that manual to add to my collection. And some supplementary notes. The main system information comes on these uh, you know these particular special guides and starter books and stuff like that. So this is what you use to basically get yourself up and running, get the communication working, how to set up the ports, how to set up the uh, transfer rate, stuff like that. So all the things there just to get that ball um, demo get up and running. Then once you've started the system, then you can obviously start to get to know how to program the game. So obviously that's what you're here for. That's the, they're the main programming guides and the library references and all the other things you need to start to learn how to build a game. Back in the day as a bedroom coder myself, um, I never had the money to be able to afford something like this, but uh, they are a pretty good uh, bit of kit. And it was I remember back in the day programming on the Spectrum, how uh, frustrating that was. So I do sympathise with uh, games programmers today compared to uh, it was doing my head in when, years ago when it was just a Spectrum. So this is the advert that comes on one of the um, 
demo CDs. Back in the day, the games were so small that magazines could probably fit two or three of these demo games onto um, onto CDs that you bought with magazines. Um, so in a bit, in a bit, a bit later on, I'm going to um, run a couple of those games just to show you what people had actually come up with. Um, because what they did, you could connect to Sony, uh, and therefore you could send them your game, uh, and then it would be featured on the uh, in the magazines and stuff like that. These are the cover discs that I've managed to collect um, just to use on this uh, this particular video. Just uh, ordered a couple of random discs. So what most of them included was that um, Net Your Rose video just to introduce you to the system, uh, try and tempt you into buying it. And then obviously these were the games that people had created. Notice at the start there that it's got the same sort of building blocks around it, showing that it obviously came from the uh, Rose system. Um, you know, this is just a, a game demo of that um, famous tile game um, you know I'm absolute rubbish at it can't play, can't play it for toffee I've always wanted to play it uh, and, and be good at it but never really got the hang of it and this is the next cover disc this one I think this one's um, sensible soccer not sensible soccer it's um, total soccer again same sort of building block startup screen this one's actually really good um, you know as, as you know, games go. This one, I think, this one really could have done quite well. I was uh, quite impressed with this. It did play quite well. The system only um, couldn't use the CD drive. So even though, even though I, I'm play, actually, play, actually playing um, the uh, demo discs on this uh, machine, you couldn't, you couldn't make a Net Your Rosa game and then burn it to a CD and then play it on the system. So. Unlike a lot of the other dev systems, you can actually play retail games um, and stuff like that on the, on the uh, Net Your Rose, um, but you can't play the dev system stuff. So, um, you know, you, were, you could only use the 2 meg of um, onboard storage that the PlayStation actually had. Um, so, you know, these, game, these games are a pretty good feat when you consider how limited resources they had. They didn't have um, you know, any access to that CD and only had to use the basic resources of the system. Um, having said that, though, when you when you watch Ridge Racer and stuff like that, you know they're using pretty much um, you know loading the the map, the racing map into its main memory. So you know, there's no real, no major apart from the sound. There's no major access to um, the CD. So yeah, it shows what you can be done. So anyway, that's a um, look at my uh, Net Eurose system. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll catch you again in the next one. Bye for now.